You've probably seen the metric boatload of videos that we make every year at CES, but the thing is, in spite of being called, and I quote, the most powerful tech event in the world, the show runs out of Las Vegas, where the hotels don't exactly have the fastest internet. So instead of sending our footage back home to the studio to be edited, we have to bring our editors to the footage. And there's a lot of footage. So much so that a couple of years ago, we built this. And you might think, wow, Linus, that looks like a crappy old business machine. <laughs> and you're right. But I promise, it's got a heart of gold and a heart of Kyoxia CM6 NVMe storage, specifically 60 terabytes of it that allows our editors to work on location with the same speed and efficiency as they would with the crazy servers we have here in our studio, all without even having to think about running out of space. It's small enough to fit in a, yes, thank you for that, Jake, carry on, and it has enough networking to support more editing machines than we could ever need at the show. But it has a major flaw. It's, ugh, at least with the case, way too heavy. I actually almost missed my flight last year because of this thing. It just so happened that like the airline check-in manager was a fan and was like, okay, he can go. We don't want that to happen again. So it's time for a portable NES V2. Smaller, lighter, but just as capable. And we're gonna be using. Oh, oh yeah, you have the box. Do you want the box or the actual thing? Sorry. Meet the Minis Forum MSO1 Mini PC. This thing's gotta be what? A quarter of the volume of what we built before? And if the spec page is to be believed, we'll be making basically no compromises to performance. Perhaps the best part is you can just buy one of these online, no weird modifications required. Check this out. I can even fit our sponsor in there. Threat Locker. Their cybersecurity event, Zero Trust World, is a great way to get some hands-on experience on how to protect against modern threats. Click our link and use code ZTWLTT25 to save $200 on your registration today. We promised basically no compromises compared to our older NAS machines, so why don't we start with networking? Any storage system that we use is gonna have to be at least 10 gig ethernet, good for around one gigabyte per second of throughput to the MacBooks that our editors bring to CES. But this has not one, but two onboard Intel powered 10 gig SFP plus ports, not unlike the system that it's replacing. But on top of that, it also has dual two and a half gig and dual 40 gig USB four ports, which could easily run 10 or even 25 gig Thunderbolt adapters. Now we wouldn't want to bring a 25 gig switch with us to CES, right? Are you not, are you? No, I'm not. What? Well, I don't know. I'm not gonna... can never tell with Where you. Where am I gonna put that? I'm gonna bring that on the airplane? I'm gonna end up on a watch list. The point is, the onboard 10 gig is already lots for what we're doing, but it's cool that we could go faster if we wanted to. Speaking of faster, is that a freaking PCIe by 60 next slot? On a computer this small? It's a half height slot, so there are some limitations. I call them Linus slots. That's a great name for them. Unfortunately, while it is a 16 x slot, only eight of the lanes are hooked up, but that's still a ton of bandwidth to play with if you wanted to add something like a couple additional SSDs or in our case, an Nvidia Quadro P1000, a half height, oh my God, it's so cute, single slot workstation GPU. Now this might be a bit of an older card, but realistically it's powerful enough for our purposes. Actually, why do we need a workstation card? We're gonna thing? get into that in this, the, read the bloody script, brother. Uh, which we'll talk about in a minute, but but the system officially supports up to NVIDIA's current gen RTX 2000E ADA with a whopping 16 gigs of VRAM. Or if you're feeling crafty, you can install this sick custom single slot cooler from Nerdware onto an RTX 4000 ADA SFF like Craft Computing showed off recently. We're gonna have all that linked in the description if you wanted to do something like this for yourself. As for why we need a GPU in a NAS, I mean, we're not running a Plex server on it, are we? Well. I don't think I told you, but I actually did find a place in Vegas with good internet. Oh. HyperX Arena eSports venue. And they offered to let us keep this machine there, which oh. is great. It's just that they're not open 24 seven like everything else in Las Vegas. So if we need to like export a video at two in the morning, which I'm gonna yeah. try not to, but happens. it happens. This way we can run a VM on this machine, remote in and render a video from wherever. That is 
awesome. And it will still have good internet. But why not go with something newer? I think I know the answer. Uh, workstation cards are expensive. And that was on the shelf. And because I had a better idea. Huzzah! The new Mac Mini M4. It's so small, and this is so small, that I can bring both. And to be honest, this Mac Mini will absolutely crush this system, even with the best GPU we could possibly put in there. Yeah, this thing is actually kind of incredible, especially for the price. And for Adobe apps, Mac OS is better anyways, so. That's why we use MacBooks for our editors. Normally here we're a PC house, but Premiere is just so much more stable on the MacBooks and we don't have time to screw around with that stuff when we're at a show. Of course, anything would shred the performance of our MS-01 in its current state. While you can buy it in a ready to go out of the box system, we got ours as a bare bones, so it still doesn't have any memory or storage. Oh, cool, DDR5 sodiums, let's go. Every once in a while, I'm like, oh yeah, Mushkin still exists. Yeah. They actually have some really cool stuff. It doesn't have labels on it, so you wouldn't know what it is. Oh, but it's on here. Oh, no, are you kidding me? Yeah, those are dual 48 gig DDR5, 5600 mega transfer soda. Wow. So we are technically downgrading our capacity, 128 to 96, but it's close. And we're going from 3200 to 5600. It's not going to be a problem. Now I just have to figure out how to get it into the system. Phillips zero, perhaps. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Ah, ooh, that's cute. You can take the fan off without actually removing the heatsink to get the sodium slots. Oh, and that gives them lots of airflow too. I love it. Yeah, but you're gonna remove the heatsink anyways. Oh. I heard through the grapevine that the thermal paste they use on these, not the greatest. A lot of the Minis Forums boxes use liquid metal, but this one, does not. Okay, screws are out, but. No, no there's two more. They? They're uh, under the foam. If you feel it oh, right there. What? I gotta take the foam off? There. I'll just poke through. Oh, that's horrible, Jake. Where's the other one? Ugh. It's not the worst thing ever. I, I, I'd actually rather you do it like that than rip the foam off because it probably won't stick back on. Remember when CPUs were square? I do. I mean. Look at this thing. It's a laptop chip. It's a tall boy. It's a laptop chip. Or a short wide boy. I assume this is Intel then, because AMD doesn't look like that. Yeah, they actually sell a few different versions of the MS-01, but we went for the top dog, Core i9-13900H. Given the form factor, like I said, it is a laptop chip, but it is no slouch. 14 cores, six of which are high clocking performance cores, reaching peak speeds of up to 5.4 gigahertz, with the rest being low power efficiency cores. But this chip is rated for a max turbo power of 115 watts. How is that a mobile chip? Well, it's a... I mean, I guess that's why their CEO's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I was just primed to say yeah. I wasn't expecting you to say that. Jesus. That's nice. He He's prepared to agree with me, even when he hasn't heard what I said yet. I mean, usually not, but I just... I mean, with the size of this cooler, or the size of the cooler in any laptop, it's not going to be able to do that kind of wattage sustained. No, in fact, Mini's form actually limits it to 80 watts in the BIOS, but they do allow you to change it. And since I heard that the thermal paste is kind of crappy, PTM7950 from LTPstore.com. Okay, it's, and maybe yeah. we can turn the wattage up then? Yeah, this stuff's actually perfect for this application. Funnily enough, the reason we started carrying it was because of the crazy improvements people were seeing after upgrading laptop chips with it. Because on a normal desktop CPU, which has a metal heat spreader, the thermal paste might only see like 70, 80 degrees. But on a laptop chip, it's a bare die, and you might actually see temperatures of 100, 110 degrees, which normal thermal paste is not made for. This stuff, it handles it. We'll uh, throw some screenshots on the screen maybe of before and after to see what the, the temps are like. Oh, did you get before temps? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, nice. I'm sure it's quite a bit better. Here's the application process, by the way. You just cut yourself a little piece, peel the one side, hope that you cut the right size piece, and then peel back the top. That's a lot. What's trippy is it goes on like a thermal pad, especially if you put it in the fridge or freezer before you work with it. So you can see it's a, it's a solid right now. But once it heats up, it changes to a liquid so that it fills in all the grooves, just like a more traditional paste would. Oh, I forgot to clean that. Yep. I believed in you though. I thought too much of you. You put so much, oh my God. That's fine. You can't put too much paste on something. We proved it recently that you cannot. You definitely can. You can put it even in between the pins and the CPU. Really, and it still worked? Oh yeah. Oh my God, you're not. What? That's the GPU mounting solution. Look, okay, Justin has not had time to make a bracket for this GPU because it's missing the half height bracket and he's going to today before we go to ces tomorrow i'm sure it'll definitely happen 
Now, since we're talking about using this as a NAS, we should definitely talk about storage, which is another one of this system's strong suits. It has not one, not two, but three M.2 storage slots, which is kind of crazy. Now in the old system, we used two of Kyoxia's 30 terabyte CM6 SSDs because, well, we had them on the shelf and it's nice to not have to worry about capacity. And while we could still use a 2.5 inch SSD with this handy M.2 to 2.5 inch adapter they actually include with the MSO one Now that we have experience running a NAS at a show, we know that even three or four terabytes is lots. So instead of me having to worry about lugging around a $20,000 in Kyoxi SSDs on a plane, we're gonna install a pair of these Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus eight terabyte drives. They're still stupid fast with a ton of capacity, but at about a 10th of the price of the Kyoxia drives. Then for boot storage, a Normie 512 gig Gen 3 Sabrent Rocket. And I think with that, we're all ready to power this thing on. This looks great. The entire package with networking, plus the Mac, plus its external network card is smaller than our previous machine. Where is that thing? Look at this. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, I could honestly probably just like stuff that in an LTT store backpack. I think it's lighter than the previous setup too. The whole thing, 8.26 pounds. 10.68. Not to mention we didn't have a Mac mini before and that switch would have been with this computer too. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. Does it work? Oh yeah. As with most of our storage builds, this system's running true NAS scale. It's a staple in the network attached storage community and it makes use of ZFS, a combo file system slash volume manager we have been using for years. I already went ahead and put our two eight terabyte drives whenever it loads into a mirror. Is that files. enough storage space for the entire trade show? We already addressed that. I was Bye. working, I had a meeting. Yeah. The point is that a mirror will create a redundant copy of any footage or projects that we copy to it. So in the event of a drive failure, which probably won't happen, we will still have a fully functioning NAS. Are you gonna talk about your Windows 11 Ooh, virtual yes, machine yes, with yes, Premiere? Yes, yes. Wait, yeah. why do we even need that if we're gonna be using the Mac to because export? Because this is our plan C. If for whatever reason the Mac not responsive. We can't get into the building, right? So sure. we're just out of luck. Well, we put the GPU in there. We might as well have the VM ready to go. So oh. if we start it up, that's also part of why it wasn't worth going to buy a fancy new one, right? Right, because we probably won't use this it. This is our plan C. And so you've just got it passed through to the VM? Yep. Cool. And I don't even need to leave the VM running. Like we can just, if we need it, turn it on. Are we using like a Pi KVM or something like that for the machine itself? Uh, haha, it's funny you should ask. Another super tiny thing, the Nano KVM. They finally open sourced the firmware on this thing and this is the more expensive one with the screen and stuff, but the base model version of this is like 30 US dollars. Basically what this does is it takes any computer, uh, desktop, laptop, uh, you know, little mini PC like this, Mac mini. and it turns it into almost like a server with a remote management interface. Yeah. So you plug this into your network, you plug this into your USB port and your HDMI port and remote access over the network to any machine. Like a digital keyboard and mouse. So cool. And actually this one, is pretty cool too, because it has those pins. If you have this in like a desktop computer, and I guess in theory you could do it with this, you can run little wires to like your power on switch. So if the system the bed, you can hard restart it. That is so awesome. Are we gonna wire it up? No, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. The system also does technically have Intel's, I think it's called the like VPro management oh, okay. thing. So you can wake on LAN, yeah. but like extra super special wake on LAN? I think it'll be okay. Okay. I like this one a lot too, because unlike the Pi KVM, it doesn't require uh, additional power. Oh, nice, unless it can the, just be powered off the system. Yeah, unless the machine doesn't output enough, but I, this, as far as I know, it does. Is it off? Fine. I wouldn't know because, you know. Is it? You gotta put the, press the power button on the bottom. Smart design. Let's look at plan B. Eh? Yep, that's a fast processor. God, yeah. the M4 Mac Mini is sick. Yeah, I mean, like if you tried to build a computer with the same amount of money, I'm sure you could build one that was like technically faster for editing. Oh, right, and it costs twice as much once you increase the RAM and storage one step. Yeah, but all we would realistically use it for is taking a final video, making a couple little edits and exporting. And sure, that might take 45 minutes instead of 30 minutes, but at least we can do it at all. I see how we're gonna edit remotely if we need to, but how are we planning to ingest footage to the NAS? Uh, it's actually pretty similar to how it's set up right now, just instead of a Mac Mini, a uh, MacBook Pro. They already have an SD card slot right there. All we have to do is take, uh, sorry if that's still open in Premiere. Wow. Take our 10 gig dongle. I mean, we're all gonna bring one, so it's fine. We don't have to share. Plug it in, copy over your footage. The place that I told you that has the internet, they're just gonna let us have some editors hang out there. No way. Yeah. 
It's like an esports venue. Oh. Yeah. The thing that drives me crazy is none of that used to be necessary. The Aria and the Vidara used to have great internet. Yeah. And then as far as I can tell, because of just like the ownership group for pretty much all of the hotels on the strip being either like one or two, and them all basically colluding to make sure that none of them are too much better than the others, yeah. um, meant that the fast internet went away. Yeah, they all, as far as I can tell, have the same internet service provider. Mm -hmm. And it's all like 10 megabit. Yep, and they used to have hardwired jacks in the rooms, and they just pu they pulled them out. Yeah. It would have cost them literally nothing to just leave them there, but they couldn't do that. Everything's Wi-Fi, so everything is dog shit. Yeah, I'm not recommending this, but sometimes they have, you know, the AP is just plugged in. You can just unplug it, plug it into your laptop. I didn't tell you to do that. I did the same thing in Japan. Sometimes it works. Of course, not all of our editing is going to be done down in Vegas. What about what we have to send back to the office here? Right. We have faster internet than we usually do, but not like 10 gig like we have at the office. So we're not going to be sending the raw footage. Instead, we're going to start using proxies. So the editors back home with our fast but not crazy fast internet can get proxy footage and then they send the project file back and then since we have the raw footage here you take your mac mini or your laptop yep. and you conform the raw footage which is basically like replacing the proxy with it and render the video cool and i think all that's left is to show how all of it fits into our commuter backpack lttstore.com here we go i'm gonna put that power cable there i'm gonna put that computer right there I'm gonna put this other power brick, which I don't even know what it's for right here. Oh no, wait, that's for the computer. It should fit, right? Well, you still left your tech sack in there. Yeah, I know. Well, I need my tech sack. How am I gonna take stuff apart at the show if I don't bring my tech sack? Oh, you're bringing this, I put that over there. Okay. I don't know, man, this is looking spicy. No, 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 let's go, we got this. Well, this can just that sit can right, right there. there. Yeah, easy. And then this. No, they're good, they're good. They're good. I'll put, the, put the cable up there. Okay, put easy, this, easy peasy squeezed lemons. Oh my god. The Mac Mini is going to have a giant scratch on the top of it. No, no, it's going to be fine. It's on the bottom where no one will ever see it except when they turn it on and off. Which nobody does, apparently. Mm-hmm. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> it should be, uh, what, what did you say, 9.6 pounds heavier? <laughs> it's pretty heavy now. I got a lot of screwdrivers in there, too. You can't bring those on the plane. No, no, I know. There it is. Commuter backpack, no Pelican case required. Oh, this says weigh it. Here we go. With a water bottle? Not bad. How full is it? 24 pounds. That's pretty awful. And here's a 24 pound segue to our sponsor, Threat Locker. Whether you're a multi billion dollar business or a scrappy young upstart, dealing with cyber threats is always going to be a very real inevitability. And learning how to mitigate risk in the online world can be daunting. But fear not, because from February 19th to 21st, Threat Locker is hosting their fifth annual Zero Trust World event in Orlando. You'll get access to daily info sessions and keynotes, hands-on hacking labs, a whole bunch of vendors with security solutions to explore, not to mention the opportunity to network with like-minded peers from around the world. There will be a ton of guest speakers, like former president and CEO of Nintendo America, Reggie Filzeme. You can even take Threat Locker's Cyber Hero Certification Exam on site, and all successful testers will get their entire registration fee refunded. So go attend to gain a deeper understanding of cyber threats and leave with some valuable strategies on how to protect your business. Sign up through the link in the description and use code ZTWLTT25 to save $200 on your registration today. Do you guys like this video? Why not check out the last time we built a portable NAS? Yes. It was sick and a lot more custom, but this is so much more I usable. mean, we kept it put together this whole time. Like I we know. actually did use it multiple times. Yeah, we used it for uh, Computex as well, I think, right? No, we used it. We used, used it. Uh, we used it at the something. Some other show. A land party. I think I used it as a uh, cash. Oh my god! 